have to just horrendous calls me, but I still love Wilderness. Yeah. And I hate when people are like, Wilderness is so overrated, man. <laughs> Number one overrated brewery. I mean Easily the, Wilderness. I have a glass that says that, so we're good. No fucking way. Exactly. S- misspelled. <laughs> yeah, even better. So I just you know, there's nothing better. And I know there's gotta be some people like that listening. And it's you know, ch- tastes change and the dudes are the that run that place are busy and that's great, but the beer that comes out of there is still legit oh, all still the numb. time. No, all I still love it. the time. And the people that run it are a cl- are a number one. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Hoppy Craftsman. I am Chris. I'm Jeff. I'm Nate. And we are back at my house. And we're all three of us here this time. It was really weird. Yeah, it seems good. like it's been a really long time since this has happened. <laughs> it really, really does. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little I bit. I actually can't remember the last time. Oh, I guess we all recorded it real wild with Woody, but not all three of us. Guys are, guys are having babies, and wives are going to real estate school, and yeah. shit's just crazy. Time stuff. And it's hot. Yeah, it's real it's hot. hot. It's hard to go outside. It's Let's be honest. It's hard to go outside. Well, we're recording inside, so that's nice. At least. Yeah, but we had to go outside to get here. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. I was just, you're it's, right there. It's definitely Touché. a factor. Had it to get to my car. A factor. So. Yeah. So, uh, well, welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to our listeners. <laughs> and uh, welcome to you. I was looking at Chris. I was making Thanks. Welcome Thanks. to your house. Welcome to Chris's home. Uh, first things first, we're going to start with some beers. We've got f- at least four good ones today. One we've been sitting on for a while. This one we're starting with, right? This is the. Yeah. This is a Ren first half. Yeah, so this is a religious habit, which is a Mexican chocolate stout. So this mm. is this was and got a little tag on there. It says Hoppy Craftsman Podcast Dudes. Because uh, Drew Poole is the shit. Yeah, he gave this to us forever. I think actually when it came out, and by the this came out 9, 18 of 17, by the way. <laughs> September, almost, this is almost, a, it's almost a year old. Yeah, so we just aged that stout for over a year, almost. Couple days here. I'll take a little photo here. It was a, a collab that actually didn't release in Arizona. It got released in California. That phone's garbage now, and they just destroyed it. Sorry, it's my wife's phone. Oh, perfect. And then uh, Drew was nice enough to uh, be able to get some here, and then shared one with us. So decided to age it for a while, and then we, today's the day I guess to try it. So best can ever. It's really Love cool. This can art. Exciting. So it looks like what a guy with has a curly mustache and a beard, and he's. Got his nose all up in a, a snifter glass, and looks like it's from uh, old Mexico. So there's some cacti in the background, some some birds there in the high, high noon, maybe. Yep. I don't I'm, know. Yeah, I'm liking that. Is that, yeah, that a good description? Yeah, description. Very, very, <laughs> I mean, very cool. I'm artwork. with you. I like yeah. it. Uh, nose, let me see him one more time. He's got his nose way in that glass. He's just yeah. all up in that. He looks like weird out Loving it Kovic. strong. Yeah, a little, a little bit. When he uh, sang that, uh, oh, dang. The Walking Through the Valley of Death song. Oh, the the uh, Amish Paradise. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. No. So that's Weird Al from, from Amish Paradise on there. Take this off. Oh, that yeah, was nice. Good sound. Good sound. I'm going to pour mine first. Someone's closest to me. But you guys can talk while I'm doing this. It's okay. No, we're going to stare. No, stare Sorry, at me. Sorry, we'll right. just stare. I'm, I'm, we're actually just staring. I'm drooling. It looks good. You guys want to hand me your glasses? And I'll... Here you go, buddy. Here you go. I, guess I should put them closer to me when I put them on the table. I like to hear when people think I like to put it just far enough for them not to be able to reach it. Then <laughs> you did an excellent job. That one's yours. <laughs> nah, I'll give myself some of the other pour there. Yeah, whatever baby pour, I'll take that one. Yeah, hook yourself up. I'll take uh, yeah. that, that skinny glass. Let's shake it a little bit. So, yeah, this More looks twice. good. Uh, what is this? A Mexican mole stout, you said? Or no? Mexican. Mexican chocolate. Oh, hold chocolate. on. Chocolate. Make me read the official description. It says Mexican chocolate stout, which I always just think of like hot chocolate, Mexican hot chocolate when they say yeah. that. So I know where you're going from. Yeah. Well, it smells delicious. Yeah. What does it smell like, guys? I'm going to dig into this. Oh, wait. So somebody else is going to have to say that because I always <laughs> murder their name. <laughs> Who is the clue I'm with? Damn, that, that tastes super good. Oh, Tio- Tioga Sequoia. Okay, I guess I could have done that better. Tioga Sequoia. Fuck you. That's pretty good for not knowing this brewery whatsoever. That's true, I guess. Tioga Sequoia. Nope. It's... No? No. Tioga? There you go. Tioga. Tioga. Yeah. Why is it? I can never say it. I can't. My tongue gets Tio- in the way. Tioga is not good. Tioga? Tioga. Okay, Tioga Sequoia. Mm. Brewing Company in Red House. That is really good. 
cinnamon. You get everything. It, it's did, did, did they think you use the cassia bark instead of cinnamon? I don't know. At this point, I Nate, you're. Know. I don't know, but I'm a fan of cassia bark. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying. That's why. <laughs> for you have the palate for it now. I see that in stuff ever since that that phenomenal beer at Bottle Logic, and I get all excited. It's like, oh, right. oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna taste like a cinnabon. Yeah, this is kind of like that. This is a uh, definitely a lot more. I mean, it's mellow. I think maybe because it's aged that long. So I think maybe cinnamon kinda, sticks. What uh, what ABV is this? Seven point two. That's not bad. I mean, you... A sweet stout that is conditioned with copious amounts of Ecuadorian cocoa nibs and delicate amounts of ancho and whatever. A bunch of dried peppers, <laughs> fresh, <laughs> fresno chilies, Madagascar vanilla beans, and cinnamon sticks. You know, for a little bit, for a minute there, I was going to compliment you and be like, "This is why Nate reads the descriptions of the Fuck bag because uh, he's so good at it." And then you just. Guaji- Guajillo, dried uh, peppers. Guajillo. Guajillo. I, fuck. Guajillo. I I get no <laughs> no heat off of this. Sorry. At Let's all. punch the desk. I'm sorry. So yeah. if if there was ever spice to this, it's it's aged out. Yeah, it's, I'm not getting any heat off this. When I take I get, the littlest bit, I can feel like I can feel what is the heat, but it's not heat. It just feels like extra carbonation almost. I'm getting like. A little tingle in the back of my throat, but I really wouldn't call it, it heat. Exactly, I, can I wouldn't attri- call it heat. I, I almost- can attribute it to the peppers, and you got like the, right. the earthiness that the peppers gave you. I you, definitely taste the cinnamon in you'd there. You'd almost call it overcarved, but it's because it's yeah. the. It, but it's that. It's that. It's not. <laughs> it's it's perfect. Yeah, for, for you guys the getting record, that metallic I mean, taste a little bit. The can yeah. It's a can probably not the best vessel to age in, but it's definitely not undrinkable. I, I'm loving it. It's I'm good. loving it. It's really good. I'm not tasting it. I actually smelled it more. It smelled a little more in the, the aroma I got. A little yeah, bit I can metallic. smell the. I, I smell, smell, smell it first, but I, I can taste a little metallic mm. off yeah, taste. The in heat there. is nice. It's mellow. Yeah. I like, and that's what I prefer. Super mellow. Yeah, I'm. I'm not getting any. It's almost to the point where it's just flavor. I mean, it's just. It's not heat. Like. It's not crime or punishment. No, <laughs> no, that's not even close to being fucking shitty ass yeah, beers. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I kind of like to put them. I, yeah, I know. I, I mean, them. I know like lots crime. of people do. <laughs> that's fair. Crime is I, good. I like that you didn't like it and I did, and you gave me the. Ones oh yeah. Had. Oh yeah. It was like a twenty dollars bottle. I was like, take this, get this away from me. <laughs> so it was. Uh, this is good. They were better than uh, the fucking rogues. Sriracha beer, or whatever that was. I, good I never tried that. I hate. I, I had no desire. There's nothing worse than a hot beer just because you want to make something hot. But that's one yeah. of those things. That's like I like beer. I like sriracha. I'm yeah. almost positive I wouldn't like a sriracha beer. No, no, not at all. It was good. I love this. I love this. This old Mexico tribute beer pays uh, homage to the history of our region, joining California and Arizona yet again. Except nobody in Arizona could get this beer. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, funny. I was, so my old Mex- like nobody could the old Mexico uh, description I gave was pretty pretty spot on then yeah no Excellent. Na- nailed it buddy almost like you planned it Excellent. it's like I read the can never he read it I, did, I didn't read the can he read the can I didn't so he didn't we are I think we're just kind of jumping around tonight right tonight's gonna be a we're little we're gonna drink a little beer and we're gonna talk a little bit about the news yeah because after stuff. this can go back to our original format drunken beer talk minutes. yeah exactly we got a lot of that. We get drunk little, and talk about beer. We're gonna do a little berries and cream from Red House. Man, this one that I just picked up today. Two of the four Red House is in. Ooh, I also bought two of the thirty-two ounce Crowler koozies. They have handles. <laughs> Crowler koozies from Red House. They dropped them today. It doesn't make it easier to pour the Crowler because that's one of my. I'm biggest, gonna say yes. It makes it. That's the one point that I have. It showed a guy like on the on the uh, on, he's got he's got like one like right here and one right here and he's got them in handles. They're sweet. They're black with little cactus all over. Like he's walking. With one yes, each hand, like he's like he's feel can't see you on the podcast. That's doing true. Your, your running man. We're gonna get video though someday. Not well, not ever, well, but we, we can think. You know, we have some. It's not a lot. Exactly. We're gonna we'll take photos. Yeah, we need to find somebody that wants to edit video for us. I, for free. I'm, Ooh. I'm 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 slowly getting into the video production world. So no, I bought a nice camera, so maybe we can bring it and take a look at it. But I, I got no time to do ed- video editing. I bought it I to put it on my kids. So. Anyway, so yeah, uh, not to interrupt immediately, but uh, yeah, they did they did the 16-ounce Crowler koozies, which, as our friend Mark pointed out, are really just skins right? to keep your hot hands off your beer. Nothing, Which is very, very appropriate for you. It's good for me. I, right. I, I mean, they've got, a knit, they've got the right market for me. Right. So yeah, I missed on the 16s, but they dropped the 32s today, so I was like, yeah, I'm in. two, please. Did you guys see the 16-ounce... Uh, can koozies from True Brewing up in Denver. 
No. no. It's camouflage with like their pentagram on it. That's <laughs> not so cool. I don't want to so see cool. it. I'm not going to look. See, that's the thing. It's like it's gonna be expensive for I mean, me. If you, if you open that door over there, I got like four or five koozies just sitting in there <clears throat> that I never use. They, I know, time, that's how Nate does. I just don't ever use koozies. I know, I know the idea behind them, but I've never poured and I've never, beer's not long enough in my glass I, that it's going to be that cold or keep it that, be, my hands going to that between warm. Between my house and my cube at work, I probably have about 20 koozies spread out between the two places. And I, I, I turned 49 this October, and I can honestly say that in my almost 49 years, I don't think I've ever used a koozie even once. Yeah, it's, it's I'm going to use a 32-ounce koozie soon Well, because I kind have of, it. It's kind of a holder. It is, but why wouldn't you, you like, just have it? You're going to buy I'm going to I mean I, I'm going to go out of my way to get 32 ounce cans just to use it. Well, I'd say you take <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I can't remember the last time I had a 32 ounce can. I'm going to have to go find a couple. If it makes it pour better, I'm in. It's got a nice handle on it. It's so it's, it's, it's it's like it's like a you know the backpack uh, adjustable straps? Yeah. They're like that on the, the side nylon, of it. The nylon straps. Mm-hmm. Is it Wait, so does it hold a crawler? Or does it yeah. actually hold? Okay, so yeah, it's a crawler exactly. koozie. Is yeah. It is. So, yeah. Well, you can find those everywhere. No, agreed. I just so had the last time I bought one or wanted to. Well, so you could, you could literally Fucking like a. strap them like into I your said, hands and, and play like Edward 40 hands while you were <laughs> jogging. 64, yeah. I would say. 64. <laughs> yeah, I have my phone right here. I'll bring, I'll bring up a photo. Dude, I'm going to say, like I said, if it helps you pour the better a beer better out of the crawler then I'm all for it because that's the only thing I'm I thinking hate you're gonna, out of the crawler is that I try what? to pour that first pour and like half of it goes on the counter. There you go. Here you go. Makes me angry. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? I guess got some sweet tattoos. Okay, but oh, what do you oh, think of the crawlers? Oh, the crawlers? They actually the crawler look crawler nice. holders. They, yeah, what that's that. what they called. I don't know. Koozie cr- crawler koozies. Koozies. Crawler koozies. Dumb word. With a K. Koozie. Really? Yeah. It's, it's I, bet it's tra- tra- I bet it's trademarked. <laughs> yeah, could be. I bet it's trademarked. Yeah, no, those are nice. Those are real nice. I've been watching a lot of Shark Tank lately. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, um, Rent House kills it as always. I'm, it's my favorite. I'm going to get that Rent tattooed on me someday. You know, it's funny. Like, I feel like over this, if everybody's listened to the beginning of the show and would so far to this part of the show, you've gone from a very Arizona Wilderness super fanboy now to a very. Like it was kind of mixed at one point between uh, the two. You know, the and now you're like Rand House, like crazy. We, well, I like that we we're gonna saw have this conversation this actually. This, yeah, this, this was a very out in the open they make, shift. I mean, they make the beer that I want to drink first of all, or, yeah. you know, and they do it in the setting that I like. Like I love going to Rand House, but I hate what I. I mean, <clears throat> I love wilderness. Right. Period. I yeah. mean, they end the conversation really ends there. They're, they've done a lot for this for the valley, but. Uh, I don't know. I just um, I, I have to just Rendis calls me, but I still love Wilderness. Yeah, and I hate when people are like, "Wilderness is so overrated, man." <laughs> Number one overrated brewery. I mean, easily the, Wilderness. I have a glass that says that, so we're good. No fucking way. Exactly it's misspelled. <laughs> yeah, even better. So I just you know, there's nothing better, and I know there's got to be some people like that listening, and it's you know ch- taste change and. The dudes are the, that run that place are busy, and that's great. But the beer that comes out of there is still legit oh, all still the time. No, all I still love it. the time, and the people that run it are a cl- are a number one. Yo, yeah. I, mean, I think at this point, really, what it comes down shit. to, like, I I still hit up Wilderness for their can releases and stuff, and going there. Nothing you know, I love, but I mean, I, I pop morning. in all the time. I just I eat there regularly. It's the only brewery I eat at. I just, period. The parking's. I mean, we're wrong. Parking in the rent house isn't any better, but oh, it's, it's just funny. Like, I think I you just don't before. go to wilderness at certain times. No, I, it's one of those things where it's like it's like that band you like that nobody ever heard of that you're fucking hugest fan of that now everybody knows about. And you're just it's almost fucking, like that, but right? I was gonna say it's like Green Day. You know, like Green Day is horrible now, but they were great back in the '90s. True, you know, and but that's not. But they're not horrible now, so I, I couldn't do that to them. Right. Wilderness parking situation is legit. Because, I mean, even outside of the last kind of parking fiasco yeah. that I dealt with, they can. with, with yeah. the with the kind of timeshare spots, right. now they have a whole row over by that extended stay America where oh, it's okay. like, this is wilderness all day, er day. Very cool. But again, when you go, you just have to pay attention. Read the signs when you go there. If, if you get towed, I got towed. It was totally my fault. I totally didn't completely right, read the small print on the sign. There are places at Wilderness that you are not allowed to park at until after 4.30. And 
on the weekends. Pay attention to what the sign says. Well, let's be honest. That building is in, is circled by parking spots. No, 100% You know what true. I mean? It's not... In, in the grand scheme, they can't help that they're just a restaurant that but makes they have, great food. They had... I mean... Up until they opened the new stuff, they had fewer parking spots than they had. Oh yeah, capacity they have in the restaurants. Well, so is yeah, it, like that's. that's I mean, it yeah. still feels super jammed in there when yeah, there's no, it's parking rough. still fine. I right. go in there and it's like there's. I literally went and got cans the other day, and I, luckily somebody was pulling out, so I got a spot. Yeah. I go in. There's five people waiting to pay for their cans in the tasting room. It's like, uh, but let's be fuck? honest, man. Wilderness is on the map. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Like people travel here to go to wilderness. I guarantee <laughs> fucking see it. Okay, is it a, you know so, what I mean? You know, 100 percent. And so, beer occasions occur in in Gilbert, Arizona, as a result of wilderness. So Santan soaks that business up. Right. I guarantee fucking see it. So they kind of tied some of this together. So when I was there. There was like there's a guy there. He he really wanted a, a crawler of their beer, mm-hmm. and they're like we don't have crawlers. And he's like, well, what's on the wall? And then the crawler when they used to sell them. And she's like, well, that's from we used to sell cans and blah blah. He's like, oh, she's like, we have tons of beer to go over here in the fridge. And he's just like, I can't take a, I can't take those cans in the plane. And you're like, well, I don't know why this guy's what? Being. He's like, he was. How the hell could you take a crawler, not a can? Yeah, he was just he was just not super happy with anything that she told him. And you he can't like, take 16-ounce cans. You only, you can only take giant cans. Doesn't make any damn like, sense. He, wa- he, he asked for like four or five things, and he, he was just like, just not not, uh, not shooting 100% today because I, I came from out of town and just come to this place, and so far I'm disappointed. <laughs> I, was uh, like, <laughs> I was like, wow, dude. People are the fucking worst. I was just like, huh. What a douchebag. They leave, but I pay. Like I was, I had a beer at the bar, and I paid <laughs> the bartender. I was like, Hey, can, uh, can I buy any of those tap handles? Those tap handles for sale? Yeah. She's like, which tap handles? But the ones on the taps right now, can I buy one of those or they're yeah. not for sale? Yeah. Seriously. And she's just like, um, I'm like, the guy's being an asshole. She's like, yeah, sorry. It's like, like it's just wild, man. What people think totally is the way to ask. You're not shooting a thousand right now. You're not going to sell me tap handles. <laughs> Dude, like, he was I, just, just, I just really want one of those chunks of wood. He was like, I can't remember what he asked for, but he asked for like the crawler, which they didn't have, and then he asked for some uh, something else, and then they don't, they don't have it. And he was just like upset they didn't have what he asked for. I try you know, not like, to be like the old man Muppets that make fun of everybody from the balcony, but it's so, easy. it's so fucking hard not to like, sit in breweries sometimes and just be like, did that fucking guy just ask that right now? Yeah. Like that happened, and I was yeah. sitting here for it. You know, it's just it's funny. So yeah, uh, just to like I said, wilderness brings a lot of money. I bet. Oh, for outside. sure. Outside. I mean, if people are either coming by, Wilderness is bringing people here. And I don't think there's a lot of other breweries that can say that. Maybe Wilderness. I mean, Renan. Even then. Right. They're, they're here because, you know, Wilderness is the biggest brewery in the world. Yeah. Or, excuse me. Made. Oh, my. Excuse me. The cigar. Sorry. Well, they won best new brewery. <laughs> it's like the that biggest wow. brewery in the world. They won. It's, it's because they brew the hard way, Nate. Yes, they do. They learned from what Budweiser. I saw a truck that had that written in the biggest fucking words ever the other day, and I was like, man, that's funny. Still, um, but yeah, I saw, still, that, they I saw won, that on a truck on the way here right now. They, stupid. They won Best New Brewery, so they put them on the map, and they bring a lot of people here, and I'm sure a lot of other breweries are so They won up. Best they should New appreciate Brewery that. in the world. Exactly. and the But our, the people who live here should appreciate it, and you just know there's so many of them out there who don't. Well, that's the, you yeah. know, you, you... They hate that there's a bunch of old people like in the world. You nailed it. There's, there's a bunch of people, like the guy Chris is talking about, that will hate a place just because it's popular. This place is good. I, I'm not going to like it, and I'm not going to yeah. like it because everybody else likes it, and I just have to be opposite of everybody exactly and, and a lot of people want to get on wilderness because their their recipes changed almost change almost all the time they redo they they make beers that are flagships in different ways right because that's what the ingredients call for but that's also craft and also using that's diff- perfect using other ingredients that's, what, that's, places, that's right. the way they want to be that this like i just like chase was telling you that one time they can't do blueberry beers because there's no naturally growing blueberries anywhere in arizona so yeah. it's not going to happen yeah it's never going to happen you know what I mean? Most the guarantee watermelons somebody. been made. The watermelon goes has been made differently than the first mm-hmm. time it made because they got the watermelons different. Right. That happens all the time in their beers because that's them. Well, and people think of it as their shit changing and quality changing. You guys it's can't not. control the flavor of every exactly. watermelon every it's, it's season. Cr- it's truly craft beer with their ingredients there, and people really like to take that for granted. Well, the the. Uh, the July 11th that we're going to have later here, that one... Totally uh, different. You look at it, it's completely different. It's a completely different color. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Still super fucking good. Right, people... Are, and I'd love to have Chase tell us why it's a little different. Oh, oh I know. I bet he'd if, have a if you great at, fucking answer. If you look at the Instagram, they used a different kind of dragon fruit. 
There you go. It's literally what it came down to. And people, and I bet but people it, still complained about it. And I bet it <laughs> all came down to location. Yep. I mean, the way they're the way they're getting their malts now, that changed all their beers. I guarantee it. Yeah. I guarantee sure. that changed their base. So it's just like people think of that as them falling off or over them being overrated, but it's them just truly doing the art with beer yeah, that agree. they love. But the greatest so, thing about that on is, their deck a little is bit. that what <laughs> that's what makes wilderness wilderness. Yeah. You know, the thing with it, they won't make a blueberry beer because they're not going to use some exactly. puree or... And they've always know. done that well. <laughs> exactly. And I just if, if people can't handle it, it's like, well, this... Yeah, this beer's good, but it's not the same color as it was last time. It's just I so mean, how, infuriating. How, how petty do you... From the outside yeah. looking in, it's so hard to just sit back and just listen to them on, and watch them go on Facebook and just watch them complain because it's like, you just don't get it, do you? Hey, They're more, like, it's like your Dr. Evil and they're, they're Scott. It's more beer like, more beer for me. You don't. You just don't get it, do you, Scott? Don't don't drink it. Somebody you else know? will. I, I'll be more Agreed. Than, they're I'll not having any happy. issues selling their beer. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to drink the stuff that those pretentious bitches won't drink. But because it's the wrong color, they it's just, not the same colors last time. People just don't get it, man. And it's one, and it's okay to not like wilderness because for me, what what I haven't been hot on wilderness lately. They just been haven't been making the beer that makes me go. I gotta get over there, except occasionally. But they make so many. Well, I just, want that peach beer. You know what I mean? They make this so many so beers. Bad. Well, they, no way they expect every one of their beers to appeal to every one of their fans every time. Well, right. They have a huge list, and they do they don't two have to cans, worry about losing. They do two can releases a week. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with them in most I'm, things. And I'm there at least so, a couple times a month. You have, so to, it's you have just, to be a little pickier or choosy with some of the yeah. beers. Yeah. I, I get it. I, just, I, got, I, I got, said, got bills to pay. You think I would like to buy every one of their cans? <laughs> I, just, I literally just was, it was funny that you went from... Wilderness all the time to rent oh, all yeah. the time. It was just kind of funny. No, I and, it, and I'm fully a f- and I'm and I'm fully and I don't know why you know I don't know what it is about Rent House. We're close with Luke and those guys, and I really like those guys. But the beer, I just love the beer yeah. nonstop. Like, beer. Even if I didn't know either of those people, like the Where's Wally and the Wally series in general, and I'm in the 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 dirty hot waters are fun, but obviously maybe slightly stagnant. And and that also people love to hop on that, you know what I mean. But it's like it's a series. Yeah, I went today and they they were completely out of those cans. Oh, it's because it was delicious. Yeah, that one was amazing. The Dolly Dagger was awesome. Which, which by the way, I forgot that we talked we had, we talked about it last time. Um, they actually changed the can art too. The can art's yeah. completely different. It was yeah. a matte black can with a green. Yes. So yeah, I was like, oh, well. I don't know. It, beer is beer, and people just need to enjoy it. It gets way too serious with some of these people sometimes. Speaking, speaking of wilderness, there's some wilderness uh, source good, anniversary. You shouldn't be using these glasses. This is I like per- you guys. Perfect. He just poured a freaking Ren House beer into a wilderness glass. <laughs> I know it's my it's my dream come true. <laughs> Sploosh. I go to wilderness for the people and the beer and the food. Yeah. And I go to Bren for the atmosphere and the beer and, and the, the people. people. So. Atmosphere and you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. The atmosphere doesn't get me a wilderness brewery, but that's just because there's too many people in there, and that's good. Good for them. Depends on when you go. So, but I've gone many times. It's berries and cream sour IPA with raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. It's really good. Run house. Another one of their uh, series of sour IPAs with a little bit of uh, fruit. It's got lactose in it. I'm gonna be honest though. I like. I wish they would do the peaches and cream on the regular base. The, I don't like the sour. You IPA like the sour base one? For, I, I, no, I liked it. I, I like it, but I like, I like peaches it, and but cream I consider too. it to be completely different beer. It's true. Yeah. I really liked I thought the first peaches and cream on a non soured IPA base was incredible. I didn't have the sour one. The 16 ounce can one? Yeah. I didn't oh, like shit. One. I should have brought one. That oh, was so good. But yeah, that first like one. The first, the first one on the regular <laughs> IPA is just, on the, on, on, uh, just really good. Really, really good. I just think they're two different beers, and I'd like to see that one. Because that was like mm-hmm. right. That was like right when I started the show with you guys. Mm-hmm. It was a while right. ago now. Yeah, fucking long time now. Actually, <laughs> that was the same weekend we recorded in um, uh, with a uh, history uh, with historic uh, historic yep history brewing with historic brewing. That was the same weekend. Yeah, that's right. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway, hmm. time flies. So we were gonna do some news. Yeah, for but sure. Then well, got, first but all, then you got me chatting. Berries and cream. What do you guys think of this one so far? You I tried like, it again? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's delicious. It's definitely uh, not super sour. It's a little like, tart. Kind of a tart. It's a little fucking warm. Jesus, yeah. Nate. I blame Nate. The raspberry on that. The snozberries in this are amazing. They do taste like snozberries. Damn, it's about 55 degrees, so you really get anything in it. 
It's all good. It's still really good. Yeah, I like it. Cool, cool like can art as yeah. usual. Yeah, it's got the uh, different. What's that? Blue, the dark blue. They got all the different fruits floating, and then little uh, I'll post creamer, each creamer milk there. Tonight, by the way, I'm gonna. There you go. Maybe. Cool. If I, if I can actually get logged into the Hoppy Craftsman Instagram. Sorry, super zoom. No, that's right. I, so I was reading an article on craft beer. Uh, funny enough, they actually had on the top banner of craftbeer.com. There were three pitchers. Uh, I recognize two of them. I'm not sure who the other person was, uh, but it was basically asked a bunch of different uh, people at breweries, brewer owners, or brewers, uh, what their bucket list brewery is. Ooh. So the one person I recognized was uh, Augie Carton, who does Carton Brewing over in uh, New Jersey. He actually does a podcast called uh, Steal This Beer as well. So listen to that podcast. It's nice. Pretty interesting to listen to. So his bucket list brewery was Russian River, which is kind of cool. It's like, oh, I guess that's kind of, it's just weird that like, like some of that, because he's actually really good friends with, you know, the guy from Dogfish, from Sam and, and other people. Like, so he's kind of well known on the East Coast. And so it's weird that he doesn't, hasn't been out to the West Coast and met <laughs> been that right. brewery yet. You know, it's just weird. Like, you feel like that should have happened by now, maybe kind of. Can know. you believe, to interrupt, can you believe how big the new Russian River is going to be? I didn't see it. They, I mean, he, I just see him flying to Germany to look at the tanks because they're custom made. And it's just like. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be like the treehouse facility. Jesus. It's gonna be just like that. Their new facility. It's gonna be wild. They better get there before they change it. So yeah, he needs to get oh, to the. Union. Hopefully. I'm sure they. Get, well, knowing Russian River, they're gonna keep their small one and they're gonna build their their new huge complex. I just want to go get one of those prodigious flights you always see pictures of. It's right. like oh, it's, it's like, like eighteen fucking beers. Yeah, it's insane. Really, I haven't seen. Yeah, that. it's like oh. a huge board of beers. It's like I want that. Gosh, I, I want to think about my, what's my bucket list brewery now that we've been so, doing this for like two years. And that is my my question. The second person I recognize in this, so I'll give you some time to think. Yeah, go ahead. The second person that I recognize on that banner uh, was this lady named Leah Huss. Oh, nice. Yeah, from Huss Brewing in, in, in good old Phoenix here. Crazy. Uh, her bucket brewing list is Purpose Brewing and Cellars in Fort Collins, Colorado. So she said that uh, during her, uh, you know, attending CBC this year, she actually talked to... Uh, Peter Bukarts, I'm not sure how to say his last name, and uh, he was very passionate, excited about his beer, and what they were doing there, and small batches they were doing. So, kind of inflicted her with that, and she wants to go nice. check that place out. So, very cool. Yeah. So that was my question: is what would be in your guys' bucket list of places that you want to go? Well, let's keep it U.S. so that way, it's yeah, a little easier. Right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Because it's easy when you go out. It's easier when yeah, you yeah. go outside. Because then we just go fly to Belgium and go sit at Cantillon. Fuck this game. Um, honestly, <laughs> right, sorry, I'm sorry. Honestly, I would no, really no, no. We'll say Pacific Northwest Canada. Is that better? I, <laughs> I would really just like to get out Labette. to like uh, the answer. Okay. In, in, in uh, I think that's in um, uh, Richmond, Virginia, or somewhere about or North Carolina. All right, somewhere like that. The answer, bro. I would really love to go there. They're they're they're, they're brewing they're brewing all those popsicle beers and. Delicious looking IPAs, and I think I, honestly, it's more of a region that and uh, right that and um, no, 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 Hell Farmstead. One, you gotta pick one. Which one? Oh, Hell Farmstead. All okay. right, <laughs> like, like you're, fucking switched. you're like, mm, they got these all, all these IPAs, yeah, these whoops, sweet never mind. Hill Farmstead. Oh, Hillstone first. I forgot those guys. Yeah, Hill Farmstead. I would, I'd like to go live there for like a week. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Work on the farm. Yeah, that'd be great. Check, the, check the stead. For sure. So, yeah, Hell Farmstead would be a dream. I, I always uh, feel so jealous of those fuckers who live within like you know a forty minute drive of that drive place. There. So it's, just, it's they're so lucky. It's ridiculous. I mean, they live in the middle of fucking nowhere, and it's an ice it's an icy hell, you know, for six months out of the year. But they they got some good stuff going on. I'm sure. It's one of those like, it's almost it's it's a kind of a toss up between do you want to go there for the beers or do you want to go there for what's there, right? Like I mean, like like you're saying, like Russian River's a little spot because it's you know it's kind of iconic at this point. There's it's it. They're great flights, and you know, you oh, I want to go to Treehouse, and, and it looks horrible, right? But it, it looks t- like a terrible line, but I still want to go right. there. But yeah, it's one of those places like that. You're and, like, and they're expanding it, yeah. It just, they just got the approval, it's done, it's happening. We talk about like Stone and some other places, it's like always like you know, they have great destination kind of breweries, and there's other places where, like I want to go there because of the beer they make too. And I don't really give a shit, like you said, like Tree, I want to go there anyways because I want to try their more of their beers, so. I would not shock me with the levels of beer that they're trying to make at Treehouse if we can get their beer, no problemo, in you. like nice. a year. Because, I mean, don't you think, think they're going to start? think they'll start doing like massive distribution? I think they'll start shipping a shit ton to San Diego. Would be nice. At the, at the start with. 
just like Allagash and all those other North Coast breweries, they pull switch, it off. Switch coasts. They just send it directly to the set to, to San Diego and yeah. Fo- yeah, that makes sense. Branch off. I mean, I don't With know. That. I just think it's crazy how much stuff they're they're, they're brewing there. So, Jeff, yeah, what, but, what do you what do you got? What's man? your what's your bucket list, bud? Well, I mean, I, I'm fortunate enough to I, I can tell you. I mean, I've hit more than a handful of my bucket list breweries. Well, that, yeah, we've but, all. I mean, right. the yeah. the one I haven't been to. If we're talking like you know, yeah, haven't been there. Right, North Need America to get there. Yes, North America. Stand, like the the thing that always pops out in my head is I I would. At right now, if you're so like, it's anticipation. like, pick a ticket and go, I would hit Tired Hands. Yeah. Tired okay. Hands is very high on my list. That's just, true. Okay. Just because they're like, fermentia. Every single freaking uh, milkshake. Yeah, yeah, milkshake IPA that they yeah, post. I know. I, I, I have to have. And I haven't had any of them. Well, supposedly, I just want to like, go live next to these breweries for a month, though, mm-hmm. because you always, I mean, you just want to go catch random releases and just pull in there for like a week and really figure out what they release and stuff. Yeah. That's It's just, it, it, Tired Hands is one of those places where like every time I see it, it's like, God, I want that so much. I try not to follow it. So I think anymore. this is a very good time for people to. Let, it, let people know that we have a Patreon page. So if they want to donate to our Patreon page yeah, and they can make, send us to any one of these places. You can send no. us to our bucket list. I doubt list we have anybody, anybody that rich with that kind of disposable you, company. You never know. know. It takes one never, person. Ed, never never Ed, say never. Ed would take out a loan to send us where we want to go, I bet. Not probably seen it. We're, <laughs> we're super nice guys. We, we were probably some of the most entertaining road trippers ever. I want to take a sabbatical. Uh, just for like a, you know a couple of months, and then we just take a tour around no the West one wants Coast. To hang East out Coast. with me and Chris. If we're not arguing, <laughs> if we're not arguing, then it, we're still making people uncomfortable. But that's part of our charm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We're like I'm no, I, think I, I don't even they like hate each other, and I'm like, no, nah, we argue really well. <laughs> it's great. We're really good at it. <laughs> we don't hate each other yeah. ever. We just argue. We love arguing. I like your arguments. <laughs> great, but that's just me. We really need to go to San Diego soon. Oh, you know what else is on honorary mention on the bucket Ooh. list is Rowley. <laughs> that was too obvious. Which is funny is is I was really wondering. We gotta if, fucking get there and hang out with our dude. That's true. I was. Like, it's, it's funny. It's gonna happen. That's why I didn't mention it. I was like, will we get through an episode without actually mentioning Rowley? But evidently not. Yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say Rowley, but it's Hoppy like, Craftsman brought to you by Rowley Farmhouse. Every, everyone already thinks that. <laughs> get that yourself a hard farmhouse ale. Everyone, everyone already thinks we're filleting those guys. <laughs> hey, you know what? John Rowley's good peoples, and hey, that's just the way it is. Dutch Rudders goes both ways. So. Yeah, my arm, his arm, working in motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, you know what? Beer is a tight, tight knit community. So it is true. the way it is. Uh, so mine would be the guard mm. and Tillamook. I want to get oh, some. I'm gonna dude, get some. I got some Till. Well, oh, I'm so like oh, I'm a tangents tonight. I want some. I want some ice cream. I want some I yogurt. Say, and don't get me started on beer. Oh, jeez, Jesus. Yeah. Sorry for all the people that have uh Oh, if you're lactose intolerant, yeah. I'd swallow a bullet immediately. Wow. Yeah, that's rough. What about just a pill? <laughs> you I say a pill they, yeah, you take a pill and it's yeah, you're yeah, fine. Don't make a mess. It's shaped like a very tiny bullet. Yeah. That's true. Don't make a mess. <laughs> yeah. So how about lightning that's round? How about how about uh you know, bucket list brewery outside of the US? Can't be Canteon. I don't I don't know any. Omni oh, Omnipolo. Oh Omnipolo. Oh yeah. yeah. No, that's good. That's another brewery. But, it's like um, it's the like Colonel. Omnipolo is like the Swedish oh. tired hands. It's like, oh my god, you guys don't make anything I don't want. Dude, the Colonel was amazing. They were only open on Saturdays for two hours, when you could come and get their beer in, in flights, and they were just like the most basic little brown labels on on brown. And this is in the UK, because um, my dad lived there for a couple of years for work, so I'd go over and drop, visit him at least once. Names. Oh, we're not talking about KFC right now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Colonel Kentucky Fried, obviously, but yeah, the Colonel K. I, th- I think it's even with a like computer spelled like the Colonel. But um, so anyway, so they're German. Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck if I know. All right, so I think we should take a quick break, real quick, and then I will come back and, and give you my lightning round answer for that. Nice. I was just about to quote Iron Man 2 to be funny, but I couldn't think of what he's the fucking <laughs> Russian guy said. <laughs> Tony, Tony. You know, no one on my crew had seen that meme of that little kid. Have you seen the little kid that drops his ice cream and they're like, this kid sounds like Iron Man? Yeah. He drops his ice cream. He's like, Wee! 
<laughs> and I was talking about this, and everyone's looking at me yeah, like I'm crazy. Man. I'm like, Google it right now. It's Kid so Cry good. sounds like Iron Man. They brought it up. They're fucking dying. It's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Because they cut it into like five different scenes, dude. It's so good. Uh, All right. All right, guys. We're back. Uh, so before we left, uh, Jeff told us his rapid round uh, out, out of the U.S. Right, brewery? Fuck it. Let's brewery. Omnipolo, yeah. Omnipolo. Omnipolo. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I had the Colonel. And the Colonel. Sticking to it. Which I just think of KFC. I'm a Jeff on Either that. that or like a t- like K- uh, bucket list tap room is still like a Houston tap Best place, awesome place. So, uh, so since I can't I use bet. Cantillon, and I don't really know, I mean, maybe Brew Dog, but so there is, there's a new brewery that, that I kind of want to go to. It's opening up soon. You guys are going to want to go here. Uh, it's maybe this place, it's basically this place called Mickler. Have you guys heard of them before? Mm, no, I've heard of a no, brewery called Mickler. McKellar. It's not ringing a bell. No, it's Mickler. Oh, okay. Same guys? Yeah, same, same, same people. Yeah. Same family? Yeah, same people. Same oh, okay. Family. All right. Cousins. Maybe, oh. maybe one's the British spelling and one's the English right, spelling. Right, right, right. Okay. Now, Mickler is Denmark, right? Are they coming to the U.S.? No, but they're actually opening up, uh, was it a, basically a place in London. Oh, nice. But so, Mickler is based out of Denmark, aren't yes. they? Yes, yes. Yeah, they're yeah. Danish craft brewers. They've got, some, they've got some, some nice tap rooms, and they've got one in San Francisco that I've been to. San Diego was... That's cool. Damn right. Fine. That's right. We went to the one in San Diego. Yeah, right. I want to go to a European oh, yeah. one. That key lime pie. Oh, so good. That was awesome. Uh, so the yeah, brewer there was fucking dope. That's even more. That so guy true. was awesome. They're opening a, a location in Shoreditch, London, October nineteenth of this year. See you there. Um, and the reason I want to go there is because they're opening it with uh, Rick Astley. Whoa, really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's so you, cool. So you can drink some beer and get rickrolled at the same he's time, I guess. never going to give you up. It's true. I'm never going to let I you I hate down. to break it to you, Chris. Me and you are too large to go to shortage uh, anywhere shortage. in the UK. Everything's just made smaller there. You have to be a smaller person. I'll stop looking at me, motherfucker. I, well, you're across from me. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> you, know, you just... You, the, the cabs are too small? Everything's too small. The sidewalk's too small? Everything's too small. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't understand how people do it. Have you seen the roads? They just walk sideways. They're all one way. You just push people down. People just pull into driveways and run into each other. Yeah. It's like a, it's one like one big camp road. Yeah. Diving off. Fit right in there. Anyway, it's just you We're going big. there. Then we're right. gonna go there. I have no fucking way. Rick Ashley's gonna open the place up. Uh he already brewed a beer with him previously, which was the Northern Hop Lager. The only way I'm going to Heathrow is if we're from going from there to a train station to Belgium. That'll be that'll be my extent of going back to the UK. The fact that he's not introducing a beer called like Rick Rolled or something right along now. those lines. They'll is get a, there. It's a fucking crime. They'll get there. And that's what Come I'm hoping, on. They hoping. can't blow their load at first shot. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes they first, can. First go. Yeah. Why have Rick Astley open the place if you're not going to have that beer? Yeah. He's going to open up the place, Man, though. Man, has got a point. So when they when they open it, he's actually going to play a concert for everybody there. So. I mean, he lives uh, actually in London, I guess. So It's fucking super random, by the way. <laughs> Which is one of the stores I had, by the way. It just led really well into that. It's like Jeff set me up really well. Nice. Nice job, Jeff. Yeah, really lobbing great, right there. Great segues. Never going to give. Never going to give. <laughs> Which, uh, if you, guys, you guys should maybe Google it, but there's a, the, the, the logger that they made. It's kind of in that, like, the cartoony look that McKellar has all the time. But it's, uh, it's definitely Rick Astley, and he's, like, holding, he's, like, he's doing his hair, <laughs> I guess, in it. I don't know. That's what the tap handle looks like. It's really odd. Should you find a picture of it? Put it up somewhere. I'm just trying to imagine it. I'm gonna go with that. No, use your yeah. He's got I'm just that, staring at you. He's got that nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen The Simpsons. Yeah, there you go. I can imagine it. Nate's like, no, my my rendition in my head is much better. <laughs> everything I everything I come up with in my head is always better. <laughs> that was, I was like, I said it was just it never it, translates. It really worked really well when Jeff said that because then. It's like, it's like we did this before. Don't do that with your hands. It's like we fucking put your hands, put your hands, yeah, your hands in the middle of my hands. Put your hands in the middle of my hands. You guys, <laughs> <just show this. laughs> guys and open need, them up. You guys need me to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> you need me to walk out in the front yard. Do a trust fall later. Uh, so what are we? What are we doing right now? Uh, July eleventh. Nice. Yes. Looks pink, man. Why isn't it this? Why isn't it the same color as it was last year? What is this shit? They did not put in as much in this year so they could make more or something. Because as much as we would like him to, it smells fruity. Chase can't control the freaking botany of dragon fruit. Just dragons. He can control dragons. I hear. You said it put. I they said, to you fly said they put it on the dragons. 
You said, I thought you said they put it on the can. That this, oh, they put it in the Instagram post. I'm sure that's what you meant. That's what I said. So the beer in the can said. is yes. based on... People can go back and listen. Maybe I, maybe I did say can. No, that's people, what you said. Listen to, people listen to the episode, go Mag- back and Animus. listen. Now, the last time they did this, it was with, with Cycle Brewing. Right. Well, that was the, yeah, the original was with Cycle. This is still the same whatever. Same but. dude. But now he's with Magnanimous. Ooh. Or he is Magnanimous. I'm sure he is Magnanimous and he's creator of Magnanimous. What is what is what does magnanimous mean? I don't know. You were throwing it around pretty adeptly. I figured you knew. <laughs> I mean, I know what magnitude is. Oh, uh, what does magnanimous mean? Here's the definition of magnanimous: very generous or forgiving, especially Ooh. toward a rival or someone less powerful than oneself. Boom! I bet he's magnanimous, and the name of the brewery is magnanimous. I stick with my original statement. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a doormat. <laughs> Sounds like a nice fella. So anyway, yeah. So I'm. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they went an organic, a different organic route, or if the hall was different. I mean, that's the fun thing about wilderness. They, it's not about what's available. It's excuse me. It's not about just sourcing what they need, no matter what, to achieve an, to achieve a, a recipe. It, it's, it's about still, what's available. It's still a nice juicy IPA. It's got that. What did the? It's got that great dragon fruit flavor. What did the farm yield this time around? That's what it's for them. You know what I mean? What did? What can they get from wherever they're getting it from? Well, you that's guys, what it's about for them. You guys and, remember and they make the, the beer pictures, based on that. Remember the pictures they posted when they were processing all the dragon fruit last year? Right. That shit was super bright pink. Yeah. So and, and again, the 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 and, beer the beer last time was like a a very bright like magenta color. And they and they get this stuff where they can. They keep it local, and they don't fret. If it's a little different, I don't think, right. in my personal opinion. Right. And nor should they, because because again... I think they don't lose their fucking minds if for some reason the dragon fruit comes from a different pl- comes from a different place. They, right. Maybe it makes them feel better about where they got this dragon fruit. Maybe it's just, like I said, maybe the yield was just different. One, well, this, I think it was you know a little strain even. Yeah, actually. exactly. I mean, you know, there you go. They just don't. They just keep it fluid, and I think right. people like to mistake that for falling off or over, you know them just not caring and being overrated and right. i just and i find that so f- infuriating i can't imagine how just, hard it is so to craft, source dude. dragon fruit here in the desert it's an art for those guys man and, and again they, and, and, but in a way to source it where they they get enough without breaking the bank without you know saying hey we got to charge you 30 dollars for a four pack which would really make people's heads explode oh yeah i mean even more so than this isn't the same color and i'll be honest i went and i bought this you guys saw the picture i posted today i was like i'm gonna get that shit and you know do a great photo op with that super hot pink beer and i poured it i was like well that's a different color taste it still tastes delicious carried on with my day took a picture and posted it anyway Get over it. It first is a it's notice. a good beer. First thing I notice, oh, it's not beet. You know, it's not super red this time. It's not super whatever. You know, and I guess you know, and you know, yeah, sure. Still, they just still taste amazing. My heart, but it doesn't. You know, again, I this I won't make the same point over, but. It has the flavor is still there, but they made it a little different, and they really don't give a fuck what people think. For, I'm sure. for me, it's 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 not even. So when I saw the color difference, I didn't think, oh, what 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 did they do wrong or what was it was me. I was oh, like, oh, I wonder what that tastes like now. Yeah, like it was exactly. just like, oh, it could, it could exactly. be completely different exactly. now. It could be a different flavor. It could be better. I mean, Perfect. What you know, it, it, what what variation is this? <laughs> right. Because you know, because we know they don't worry about sticking yeah. to the paper. Well, they said, you know, they like have said, their guidelines. I, I literally bought this to take that picture. And when it poured out this color, I wasn't like, those sons of bitches. <laughs> I was like, oh. Drain poured that shit. They must not have gotten dragon fruit oh, that was as deep red as last time. People are so How does it silly. taste? Oh, it tastes like an IPA with dragon fruit in it. <laughs> right. Yep, people are just so silly, honestly. It's, Again, uh, but, everyone, you know, people just love to hate. and People love to, to uh, I don't know. Social media it's has easy turned to hate. people it's easy into... To hate complainers by career like everyone everyone thinks you know through social media that it's like now you get to complain about everything all the time the only reason i could think you could just have a a, a, just an odd dislike for wilderness is if somehow you think they're doing something bad to the craft beer scene right which is just weird so i guess i could be kind of hypocrite here because i'm going to complain about some craft breweries (laughs) i'd love to i love to complain about craft breweries (laughs) i mean I only have complaints about local ones here, though, so here. I don't have any enemies to make. I guess I'll say this: is if the 
people want to complain about craft breweries, they can just start their own podcast and pay for all our gear and hosting and do all that kind of stuff. Or they can, they can send it to us. And we like if ooh, ooh, if someone like really dislikes a brewery and they and they could write to us and we could talk about it on air, that'd be great. Please send us a letter though. Don't yeah. don't email. We don't do that yeah. kind of stuff. Send us. Well, but you can USPS. email us if that's how you want to do it. But we yeah. like paper. I mean, paper it feels the, nice. Paper space. Nice. We I smell it. You know, spray us some perfume or cologne, <sighs> whatever. This one's from a lady. <laughs> We think, or is it houseboat bill? Sorry, <laughs> ladies' man. <laughs> anyway, so not necessarily new, new news, but it's something I saw the other day, and I and I didn't actually give it a, a good once over, and then I actually saw it today, and I decided to read it. Uh, Beaverton Brewery or Beaver Beaver Town Brewery from uh, London is mm-hmm. actually sold mm-hmm. a, a, a not a majority stake, but a large stake to Heineken. So, which. Kind of over, you know, it's kind of over the pond. So you need to have, we see, when we do this stuff in the future, we need to have the sound effects here. And every time we mention a brewery selling, we need to have like some like, you know, like dead sound, like, or like the Titanic song. <laughs> Maybe. Like, you know, we'll some, saying goodbye. We'll probably get you for that. Saying goodbye. Bo, 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 bo. We'll get you. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> just, you know, just, you know, it's just something to say it's dead to us. So for, for people that know who, Actually, Beaver Town Brewery is. Uh, it was actually founded by Logan Plant, who's the son of Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Um, hmm. They basically useless fact of the day. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, he's, he's the owner. Uh, so he's I, not hurting for money. I, I mean, not really. I mean, they sold a, a stake for Clearly. fifty-three million. Holy fuck! He wasn't hurting for money, regardless. Now. Yeah. So good for him. There's a. I'd sell my local brewery for fifty-three million, and I would slap my biggest fan in the face with a grand. <laughs> <laughs> he's still gonna be part of it. He well, his his dream is that uh, this influx of money and being part of what uh, Heineken does will help. He wants to actually call build what is it called instead of Beaver Town. He wants to build Beaver World. Who knows? Sign me up. Well, yeah. there goes that brewery. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, he so that being said, it feels like a wicked weed situation right now because they actually have Beaver Town's extravaganza coming up. Uh, oh, everybody backing out. So as of the article I saw, and this was July 5th, so that's you know a month ago, easily a month ago. Um, the Veil, vale, Cloudwater Brewing, Brewdog, Jester King, Buxton, Brew by Numbers. Oh Verdant, my God, those Deja, are the kind of people they had showing up. They and, didn't, and they and, didn't expect that. And Evil Twin, all backed out. Yeah, those so are real crap breweries. I'm sure at this point, there even more people gonna be backing out. So we'll see how it goes. What a bunch of fuck times. Um, there's actually an article from uh, Jester King. We got from Jester King, uh, what's his name? Jeffrey Stuffings, I think his name is. Yes. Uh, he has a big, you know, he, at this point in, in the article, he basically said, you know, it's kind of like, well, it's, a, it's almost numb to this at this point, right? Yeah, it's it, another it, one bites the dust, you move on. Yeah, and he's even more, they want other people to kind of like go to the forefront and start making all the noise about it. But since they actually have a collab that just came out with Beaver Town, they have another one coming out. And they were supposed to attend Beaver Town's extravaganza. He felt like he had to say something, <laughs> and yeah. so basically, yeah, that you know they weren't really down with that. They're not, you know, not they're they like you know independent craft people that are local that do small stuff, whatever. Um, it's a really good article. You can go read all that. I'm not gonna recap it for everybody, but well, it's it's, just, it's it's nice. I would say this: the cloud cloud water actually had one of the best kind of responses to them. Let me see it up in the there's like. A little blurb, and it basically says uh, that you know that Heineken, like one of the reasons that they're going to Heineken, this is what Brewtown's or Beaver Town said, is that it's that the the people there are great and have a good relationship with them and blah blah. And Cloudwater brought up, he's like, yeah, except for all the things they're in Africa, and like basically, evidently Heineken's been accused of, and there's a ton of stuff on here, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of them, but. Uh, let's see. Been accused of allowing the widespread sexual abuse of employees, agreed to financial settlement with workers in the Demo- Democratic Republic of Congo after being accused of collaborating with the rebel movement to breach workers' rights, been challenged over involvement in labor bar- brokering practices in South Africa, relationships with dictators, tax evasion, human rights failures, operating with genocidal regimes. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to read the whole list. What? That's not even the whole list. <laughs> Like it's insane. Wild. It's like wow, Heineken's got some really bad things. They're the second largest freaking producer hey, of beer in the world. They sold so, that. How, how much did that? Fifty-three company, million. Uh, how much of the company did they get? I didn't say. That's such a fat. Not a stack of cash. Not a controlling stake. Nope. 
Oh my gosh. Come on. Right. Why why wouldn't I, you sign on the dotted line? How you, people understand yeah, that we're humans, right? I, I get we, it. You know what I mean? Like that guy needed to be richer. He did not need to be richer. If someone's gonna wave fifty three million dollars in his face to make his brewery larger. And at the end of the day, if they end up ruining it, he just got fifty three million dollars. He said you know, he wants to build he wants to go to the, he wants to go to the next level and build Beaver World or whatever it's called. You know, it's cool, so interesting for you, to me. But, I find I it know. so interesting to the that that, that that these these big breweries even bother buying out other breweries anymore because I feel like it's so close to a bubble everywhere. Well, it's one of those things where it's like, like pe- pe- we are making beer at an all time rate. Go ahead. No, I just I think that they at this point small craft breweries feel like they're annoyances more than anything, right? They're kind of annoying to all these bigger like. To well, the, the smallest ones are the most annoying because they're the ones really killing them. Well, that's the thing is that so they're they. The bigger companies know as well. Either we just wait them out, or we just buy them up. At, you know, so at this point, it's like, well, eh, and Plus, that's happening. I think I think some are too small to buy. Of course, no gonna... Ren's too small to buy. Yeah. Wilders would never. But, I mean, you say they would never. Never say never. But if someone handed them, handed them a hundred million each. I mean, I mean, we talked about this before. That's a new brewery, right yeah, there. Like I said, it's you hard. know, say say which one about Four Peaks. You know, you know, AB and Bev shows up on your doorstep with half a billion dollars. You're going to be like, get out of here. Get off my land. Is that how much they bought them for? Yeah. It's like 400 and something mil. Holy so I heard, shit. I heard more than that. And that wouldn't surprise me either. Yeah. That's so. ridiculous. I would sell my brewery so fast, it's not even funny. Because people got, I mean, it, it's a business. It's always a business. Sure, it's about... Sure, it's about the art for a lot of these guys. It's a lot about the craft, but man, it's a lot about money. Half a billion dollars, yep. you can fuck off and start your own brand again. Yep. So, and and have plenty of room to fail. Go start something else for a while and then come back. Exactly. <laughs> go do something else. I don't know. I Yeah, Not I mean, I get it. Trolling steak? It Holy just, shit. At a certain point, it's the whole, I don't know, it's the, the it's not even morals or ethics of it. It's just one of those like, I don't know. It's tough. It's it's hard as well sometimes. I mean, and, and I, I get it. I totally understand it. But sometimes, well, you just get sick of it. And it's, when's enough enough for some people, right? I mean, you no. Know, if you're a bigger regional brewery, or if you're making, if you're you're not scrapping by each batch you do, and you're actually doing really good. Like you're opening up fucking tasting rooms downtown, and you're going to open up production facilities somewhere else. How bigger do you need to be at that point? You know? Yeah. What what does it really take? So. Be I happy. Bet, I bet wilderness <laughs> goes up north, maybe. Yeah. I would not be shocked if they put some tiny tap room up north. That's fine. And I'm, I'm saying that's that's totally understandable, but when is it getting too big? You know, when when are you when are you big enough? You know, do you want to take it worldwide? Do you, do you want to become I don't know, man. I think yeah, the all third depends largest on, craft brew in the world. It all depends on who's really running the show. It's true. I mean, some people who are Brewing the beer have one way of brewing the beer, and they're the way the tap room gets run. Right, but somebody else might be paying the bills, and a lot of the time, nine times out of ten, with these breweries, they are. So. But you know the 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 overarching theme you hear in a lot of these places, like the big sellouts where people make like these mind numbingly sums of money, is everyone always says like, well, yeah, they 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 set themselves up to sell. And there's there's like the little tiny breweries, you know, the little mom and pop shops, the little corner micro brews that they're never going to generate enough beer revenue to really get noticed or be a blip on the map. And then you have the people like Four Peaks where, you know, everyone says it's like, you know, Four Peaks wasn't designed to sell. Well, maybe not initially when they first started back whenever, but ultimately it had to have been part of their business plan. I mean, oh, everyone, I don't know. everyone I mean, says everyone says that like you know, freaking Huss Huss is is freaking well, designed to sell. The one I always believed was designed to sell, and, or I read and and believe full wholeheartedly. Nobody tastes that just yet, by the way. I want your want it's your opinions because it's crazy. Um, Golden Road. I mean, Golden Road was built and created to sell. Well, they 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 said it flat out in I mean, interviews. Like they talked about like their five year plan was to get bought. There was yeah. no if and about it. So, and that's wild, right? And they all got rich off that plan. So fuck them. I mean, honestly, I know that's rude to say and crass possibly, but I just yeah, think that's so but again, silly. And, and I mean, not even really silly. It's just, I guess, like I said, you want to win the lottery, you do it however you want to do it. Some people are just, there's just scummier ways to do it than others. You know just, what? Just oh. off the cuff, I mean, you know, 
I have a master's in freaking business. So, you know, you don't have you don't have people like mom and pop. And I mean, I'm not disparaging to I'm going to use Pueblo Vida as an example. And it's not to say that I don't think Pueblo Vida could ever do it. But in Pueblo Vida's current state, no one's going to come in and offer Pueblo Vida like millions and millions and millions of dollars to buy them. No, where you not have valued at you them. have like the golden roads where these people are going out and they're getting all these investors. They're they're building up all this capital because that's what they want to do. You know, you want to make huge volumes of beer. And the minute you move from like, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 barrels to like these huge, you know, several hundred barrel systems, you are setting yourselves up to sell because you you're you're looking at distribution, you're looking at marketing, you're looking at all these things that that reek of big business. So there's a big difference between a microbrewery who just wants to be a successful microbrewery and a microbrewery that starts with a bunch of investors who starts cranking out tons of beer and does distribution right out of the gate. Those are the people who are intent to sell. By measure by that measure of size, I would say the only breweries that are anywhere close in the state that could be bought then are Huss, Santan. Sleepy Dog, well, no, Sleepy, Sleepy Dog, Sleepy Dog's canning big time and distributing still, yeah. right? Look at, look they're at buying Grand, two brothers now. Look at Grand Canyon. So then two brothers could be. So then two brothers is on that list instead. Yeah. So and Grand Canyon, Grand, Canyon, Grand, Canyon's Grand Canyon's Canyon on that list. Time. Yeah. Because they because they're big enough to big they they distribute yeah. plenty and they're there. killing it with their freaking spirits now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So by the, that measure, the Armada's there's, coming. There's not that many breweries in the state worthy of buying. And probably only really Santan. Well, financially, really? but again, Santan. again, there are a lot. Wise. There are a lot of. That's what I mean. Operation. Right, right. Sorry, a lot I of, just not, mean operation. There's a lot size. of breweries here that don't even dream about. By I, I mean, measure of delicious beer, there are several. More, I'm sure so. the owners sit there. It's like, how awesome would it be if you know, like, someone knocked on our door and offered us, you know, like freaking hundred million dollars? Yeah. But ultimately, they know that that's never, gonna that's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to have the size, and yeah. that's and that's true. And by that measure, there's only a few. Right. So we're drinking. So, wrap, off, wrap up beer. Wrap up beer. This is our wrap up beer because we're wrapping up. This is Spa Day. Spa Day IPA from uh, McFate. No, wow, that is and cucumber. Caitlin, Holy my, shit. my wife ordered this I from. It smells like melons. It's it, my wife ordered this from uh, the Divided Vine on IPA Day, and I was like, dude, what's the fucking cucumber on this? That's insane. Yeah, you know? it's super cucumber. It, and, aroma. and so, and she told me it's called Spa Day, and I was like, "Oh, Makes whoa, sense. cucumber!" Uh. And so, it's a Spa Day from them. It's brewed with over two hundred and twenty-five hashtag of fresh cucumber. So I'm guessing pounds. I don't know. Brewed with over two hundred and twenty-five pounds of fresh cucumber and intensely hopped with German bread hops. Crisp cucumber and melon aromas with a fruity, balanced finish. That's really good. It is really good. Wow, that is different. Isn't that wild? That is a different kind of IPA. I don't even know how to describe that. It's definitely it's super melon in the nose, like you said, like cucumber and melon. I feel like a flavor. chef would have a wild day pairing that with something good. I mean, wow, the cucumber good. in that is crazy. Euros, man. Euros. Yeah. Mm. It's All fucking day. tzatziki in a glass. Yeah, that's awesome. Serious. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. That's really that's, a, that's like a Greek yeah, like a Greek salad. It's so yeah. good. Give me some tzatziki all day with that. Yeah, I like that. So. Yeah, I thought that'd be an interesting one to bring. Thanks. Thanks. Did they just release it here? They actually you said yeah, I think about, about a, buying, I think right? I think I saw seven thirty one on the pack, so about okay. two weeks ago. Um, and this just got distributed from McFate out, so they just Very realized cool. they had enough left over to start pumping out to that. And evidently, like, you said you got it on on draft, so I that... had it on draft beforehand, okay. and then I had cans after. So they'll keep it. Maybe they still have it at the yeah. McFate South there. Yeah, they should Very still cool. have it. Very cool, man. So yeah. Well, guys, let's uh, let's wrap this up. Well, we had four delicious beers today, um, and uh, you know it was a good show. I don't know what we have coming up. We need to uh, fully book some shows, but um, we just got a trip to San Diego. Hopefully, we'll get some beers when it goes out there. Bring it back <laughs> for us. Heading to San Diego this weekend. We've got um, Brewer for Two Brothers on the Hook. Very interested on in being on the show. Um, owners at Oro Brewing, who are also the right. wife, is our coworker. I don't know if nice. you guys knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, very interested in being on the show. Um, Irene's Tap Room, I hit them up. I need to hit them up again to make sure they know we're not just dicks because I hit them up. They're very interested in being on the show. So I'm going to start uh, lining this stuff up, and we're going to start doing a lot more. Uh, oh, then, and we, we, talked about, we talked to Alex, too, a little bit. We need to get him. He hit us twice up. And the whole time he hit us up, we were, we were busy. So sorry, Alex. We'll, we'll, one of these times we'll figure it yeah. out. We'll come uh, 
come do that with you. Yeah, we need to head up to Williams and take advantage of and then, some yes. of that hospitality. Then at this point, I think this episode's going to be 48. Yes, 47, 48. So this is either yeah, 47, oh, right, 48. 48. 49, let's do a normal episode two. And then 50, we're trying to cook up something really cool for you guys because it's our 50th kind of episode. We'll do some a little different. Uh, we'll see if that works out or not. Uh, so it should be fun. Well, sweet. I look forward to hearing details on that myself. Yeah, you, you, you will. Don't worry. So. Uh, if you want to find us on social media, Nate, where do they look? You should get us at Hoppy at Hoppy Craftsman on Instagram. It's the same on Facebook and Hoppy Craftsman dot beer. Oh, on and Twitter as well. They're on Twitter. Excuse me. And Twitter at Hoppy Jeez. Craftsman. Fuck. And then yeah, Hoppy Craftsman dot beer is uh, our website. Our website. Post the episodes. Post some uh, eh, photos every once in a while. Post some articles. We'll see. I've been, been slacking on that area, but we'll we'll get back in that. Uh, Jeff, who are the rightest fucking people in the world? Rightest fucking people in the world. I, I have an old list, so it, it may be inaccurate. But we do have a new Patreon supporter. Her name is Jessica Langley. Jessica, thank you for supporting us. Uh, if you guys Thanks, may Jessica. or may not know, it's kind of expensive Thanks. to run a podcast. I mean, you got hosting fees. You got these equipment fees. There's lots of fees. Uh, and I'll say Jessica actually joined the Cena tier. Jessica is in the Cena yeah. tier. Wow. I know she's running for the Cena level wow. at this point, so I might have to make another Cena 2X level tier or something maybe for Cena. We'll see. Good job, Cena. Well, so thanks, with guys. that, we appreciate that. our other Patreon supporters are Cena Gomez, the podcast formerly known as San Diego Beer Talk Radio. Are they still doing that? Yeah, which is uh, Indie Beer Talk now, I believe. Oh, okay. So they're new Much better. Episodes. What did you do, A Greg? national. Uh, Mark Ballesteros, um, I think I got everybody. If I didn't get anybody and you're contributing to our show, thank you. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. If people actually want to become patron supporters, how do they do that? Uh, www.patreon.com forward slash Hoppy Craftsman. And then we have links all over our website as well, which Nate said was hoppycraftsman.beer. So. Yes, yes. Cool, guys. So uh, thanks for listening. Always, I'm Chris. I'm Nate. I'm Jeff. Big cool, guys. Yeah, that's a good idea. Later.